năm năm bơi đi năm năm when i have understanding of computers i shall be the supreme being god isn't interested in technology he knows nothing of the potential of the microchip or the silicon revolution look how he spends his time 43 species of parrots nipples for men don't do that jesus christ you're going to get me killed out of here oh billy I have nipples, Greg. Could you milk me? Welcome, everybody, to A on By, to AB Live. Not just live on the tubes, but if you want something less corporatist, we also are streaming live from Rockfin and Rumble. And, of course, there will be a replay on all podcast channels. But welcome, everybody, to this world where men still have nipples. My name is Miguel Connor, and I am your Pompadus of Gnosis. And we got a hunk of hunk of burning Gnosis show today. As always, with us, it is always a pleasure to have David Block. David, how are you? It's great. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you for having me on again. Such short notice. <laughs> short in You're like part there. <laughs> You're like part of the team now. It's like, you know, we got to do it or else it is an AM bite. And as we were talking before, now maybe you can't do future shows because now that uh, Sweden has uh, joined NATO, you might be there with a rifle marching in your border for Russians and Chinese. <laughs> that you, so, Yeah, the madness is spreading for sure. The god of war, the war pigs. Uh, it is interesting because, yeah, I always struck by it was uh, Heraclitus, all his beautiful theology did say that the true God was war. War was the foundation of the entire universe. So what are you going to do? He might not be wrong. Um, but here we are. We are the peacemakers here and the cheesemakers. And with us, too, we got somebody who's a great peacemaker and a cheesemaker. Blessed is the Moondog Vance. Vance, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. No short of, you know, nothing short of cheesy comments here. <laughs> there. So keep them coming. Yeah, I'm ready for the apocalypse and the matrix and then time and all that stuff. So it's going to be interesting. It's the end of the world as we know it. And you better feel fine as the song goes. Cause, or as James True, best apocalypse ever. <laughs> Revelation. So awesome. We will get to, we'll definitely get to David's presentation in a minute. Good to see everybody over there already in the chat. Chester, I see Graham Pong. HP Lovecraft is there with the with the old ones uh, and others. And as always, if you have any questions for David or remarks or you simply want to su support the show, please super chat them and we can separate them from the audience and get to your questions, remarks, complaints, insults, whatever you want to do. It's your call. Uh, not much else in the house uh, keeping. I'll have a bigger announcement yet, but yeah, Astronosis is semi-official and David will be one of the presenters. So it's going to be amazing. Great group of guests, still adding guests, still adding events and other things, but it's pretty much there. So get your uh, early bird tickets now for the next month, um, twenty dollars cheaper, and hope to see you there at on August nine and ten at the Theosophical Society in Wheaton once again. And please support this show in any way you can. Uh, like, subscribe, share. One-time donations is great. There's uh, many tiers at Patreon, including a, a simple dollar tier if uh, you got holes in your pockets due to the monkey shines of Archons. And uh, yeah, let's keep the Gnosis going. I can't do it without you. Um, great shows coming on in the next week or so. We will next week or so we will go Philip K. Dick heavy. We will talk about Philip K. Dick and Taoism. Philip K. Dick and artificial intelligence we will add in elvis there so those great shows with the theme of philip k dick and his promise or nightmare for where we are today uh, a show on santa muerte coming on next week and yeah great content coming the next uh, coming in march 
and the rest of spring. So I think that's all I got under my tool belt. David, do you want to take us away? Yes, let's start. Now, the presentation should be up now. Do you see the presentation? There we go. Thank you. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, somebody in the chat, I was looking about, are you going over a movie? We should say this is the first part of a trilogy. And you will, on the third presentation, you will go over movie, The Lord of the Rings. But yeah, maybe tell people about the trilogy you're doing now. Yeah, I start with the presentation of the trilogy. Uh, it's a three-part series. Part one is the present, of course. The Apocalyptic Time Clock Matrix, End Times and Revelations. Part two will be The Tower, Necromancy and the Search for Eternity. And part three, decoding the esoteric lore of the Lord of the Rings. And it will be very interesting with the Lord of the Rings. I decoded it before, but it was a very long time ago. And of course, I know much more now, changed perspective. And I have some uh, information from a previous Infowar, uh, <laughs> Alex Jones. He invited the, uh, the Lord of the Rings. Uh, society over there but they took it took it away but i downloaded yeah. the, that part so i have it and i will upload it on my channel and i will quote some of it there they talked about the tape uh tolkien was on who was buried for a long time and they find found the tape and they they are uh you can hear Tolkien talk in a very sincere tone but the tape is gone for now, I think. It ended up at BBC, and I don't mm. think they will ever get it back. But I have the, the part, Infowar part, where the Society of T Tolkien Society is, and talk about that tape they found. So I will upload it on my channel. I hope it will be, be there and not taken out, taken away. <laughs> or, <laughs> but I will try. <laughs> yeah, and, and for the try. audience, uh, if you want David's channel, his YouTube channel, I have it on the show notes. So go to the show notes, there's the link. Yeah, and I will quote uh, Tolkien from the tape. And mm. it's a very unknown tape because it disappeared when Alex Jones' channel disappeared from YouTube. They have never uploaded, up, uploaded it again. Uh -huh. So it will be interesting, I hope. So the three-part series will end up with decoding of the Lord of the Rings. But there is a reason for these two parts before that. So if you go through all of the parts, you will understand Lord of the Ring in a much more profound depth, depth of understanding. Now, this part, the ap ap apocalyptic time clock matrix, end times and revelation, is about five, have five parts. The first one is the boatman and the sandman dead but dreaming to see new life Aridu and Enki and I will present the second part the tower so I have it in brackets there but it's five parts in this uh, part so let's go back to the watcher series a little bit and to Lucifer and you have to understand what happened with Lucifer or Prometheus where when Zeus chained him on Caucasus Mountain. The idea from Zeus' side was to get to know what Lucifer knew, because Lucifer is all, one mask of Lucifer is Janus, and Janus had two faces. It means that he can see the past, the future, into the metaphysical and into matter. So he's all-knowing, and Zeus is not all-knowing. Rather, you should uh, get the idea that he is a demigod. He's probably Marduk, but also Enlil. I think it's a combination of Marduk and Enlil. And there is a reason for that as well. I will not go into it here. But Marduk is a half god. And there is a reason why he became the Olympian god, gods of God. Lucifer had stolen the fire from. Zeus or Prometheus had stolen the fire from Zeus. 
He wanted to give it, give it to humanity. Lucifer Prometheus can see the future. And he saw the boatman, Noah, uh, crash landing on shore, meaning that he, he failed his mission. And I'm going to talk about that mission later on. I call Noah a boatman, and even Gilgamesh was a boatman. And this myth are very entwined with each other. Uh, but Lucifer saw that Enlil, Marduk, Zeus would try to drown humanity in a flood. And if he would succeed, now this is not only about water as a physical water, this is about much, much more. It is about memory, uh, language, science, and so on. So, what Enlil wanted to do, and Marduk Enlil wanted to do, was to uh, was to take away humanity's memory and also the soul. Now you can't really lose your soul, but the soul can be so much so far in the dark that you will not get it or you can't reach it. And with this spark, Lucifer wanted Prometheus wanted humanity to be able to rise up again. Otherwise the humanity would end, end up like an android race after the flood. And of course, that is exactly what Enlil wanted. He wanted to drown humanity in memory or into forgot, forgetting, forgo to not remember the past, who we are or who we were. So Lucifer, Prometheus, gave Elo the spark. An Elo is also Nama. An Elo Nama is a Nephilim. So she get the spark from Lucifer to carry it over from one matrix to the next. Because when the water comes, it is a water divider. Meaning a shift in the matrix, a profound shift in the matrix. Now, if you understand that water is memory, nation, language, you can get the idea that this matrix shift is a huge thing. It's a very harsh ordeal where human, human lose the memory, previous memory, who they were or what they can become or what they have achieved. So Elo get the spark from Lucifer because Lucifer permit you see that Noah will crash land. He will not succeed. And that Noah is, has failed is also into the right hand path esoteric lore, not only the left hand path. Even the Lurionic Kabbalists know this. So Elo, her name is also alternately spelled Elio, which reminds us of Elio, Elio. The children of the Nephilim. She may even be one of them. An old pre-flood spirit, even though she is half human, she can also appear as an owl. Now an owl is a very important symbol. An owl can see in the dark and an owl is wise. The Nephilim is really an upgrade to be able to hold the spark within them. And what is the spark then? doesn't say that much to say spark. It's a program in our DNA to be able to ignite our DNA who have been shut down after the flood. 22 strands or young DNA as the scientists call them, of course. But this is also a shutdown when the matrix changed. Our DNA shattered, memory shattered, language shattered, nations shattered and the flood who smash and, and, and destroy civilization is a very upheaval uh, thing for humanity a huge shift and we have to start all over again if the boatman fails and i will talk about it later on now Elo. The owl 
I invoke the messenger of God, she who comes with fire and sword, to proclaim her will to the aeons, who purifies and destroys the soul of man, who casts the false and the wicked into Gehenna, and elevates those with the pure heart on her flaming wings. So, it is a warrior type of mentality uh, she's talking about. The, no, no, she's not for everyone, right? You need the right attitude. And a very powerful willpower to transform. Nothing is, you're, you're not getting anything for free. You have to work for it. And she's all for the metaphysical warrior class. The one who want to ignite and to search in the dark for themselves. So the Nephilim is a very it's a huge misunderstanding as always, right? <laughs> now, when you curse the Nephilim, you are really cursing yourself because you are one of them. One of them, meaning you have the spark, you have the ability to, to ignite to. To ignite your DNA, 20, 20, 22 strands of DNA. And when you do it, you also ignite your soul. Now your soul, you cannot lose it, but your soul can be so far away from you, from your mind, from your understanding, that it's very hard to find it. Now you need something to ignite it again, to have a push. Now everyone has a soul, but the soul is dormant, waiting for you to ignite it. And this is the gift from Prometheus to you, carried over by Eilo, the Nephilim, Nama, because Noah didn't succeed. He crash landed. Therefore, humanity has to get up again and rise up and start to evolve from a very, uh, very primitive state with no memory and uh, loss of language and so on. Without the spark, it would be even harder to find the soul or to ignite the 22 strands of DNA that is dormant in you. It is the young DNA. But you have it because you are one of the Nephilim. For sure, we have intermarriage with other groups of <laughs> who right, saw yeah. this line. But you still have it in your body. So when you curse the Nephilim, you also curse yourself. I just want to point that out to you. Now, this spark buried deep in, in the darkness, in, in your own darkness, in your own unconscious, but you can find it through method. And we have to go into the unconscious part under under the surface and we have to dare and we have to be brave because there are layers of dark uh, archetypes and memories and yeah. it's not a easy ordeal but you ain't got nothing for free but the good part is it is there they haven't taken it away from you and you can ignite it and you can rise up and that is ex exactly what we have to do right now and this is the gift of prometheus now you had a soul before the wall before this matrix but the soul went back like if you if you convince humanity that they don't have a soul now they are that's become your reality and humanity is so far down into matter that the soul is like completely gone almost. Now you need to find the spark. Now you have to find the dark, find your spark in dark, in the dark labyrinth of your own unconscious. But it is there. So part two, enter Sandman. And let us exit light and see what's in the dark. Now we have 
the feminine and the masculine. And a lot of people is talking about this, but I don't think many people really understand what it means. And not even I, I mean, there are a lot of layers upon layers upon layers of understanding. I only talk in this, uh, in this framework. But the feminine is the dark, is the minus, it is the uh, receptive, it is the, the womb. And it is the moon. And it is uh, intuitive. Uh, and the masculine is, of course, expansion, to expand. This is fire, willpower, technology, and it is plus. Then why is uh, masculine plus and feminine minus? Masculine expand, expand through fire and force. And these two forces have to exist. Nothing would exist without it. Feminine is, of course, water and earth. Masculine is fire and, and, and air. And uh, these elements are always in, in a flow, never stand still. It's always in flux. And it's never in balance, almost never in balance. Either humanity expand or humanity, humanity withdraw, either plus or minus, but always in movement. Humanity will never stand still. It will never happen. Either you go back towards the womb, towards the feminine, or you expand through the masculine, the plus, and you go away from the womb, further away from the womb. And we can see these forces in the very famous symbology, Baphomet. And Baphomet has both feminine and masculine aspects to it. You have the fire torch, but you have also the breast. The fire torch, torch is, of course, uh, expansion, fire, willpower. Then you see the moon. Moon is feminine, and you have the womb. That's feminine and it's dark, it is minus, it is withdrawal. So you can see this in humanity's history. When humanity starts to build up societies, we have plus, we go full force and fire and willpower to produce, to expand. This is a phase where humanity builds up the society, builds up hierarchy, rules, regulations, restrictions. And uh, when humanity withdraws, uh, collapse, society go back to a more primitive state towards Mother Earth, to the natural, you have more minus. And this is never at an equilibrium, ever. This is always in movement. But it seems like when we are on the uh, on on the expansion, a lot of things, many thousand years go by, and we all expand, 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 until we can't any longer because we have reached so far away from the womb, from the feminine, from nature that we start to withdraw. And it will be a dra dramatic uh, event. So it's not, not a slow withdrawal, rather it is a collapse. Baphomet is of course a symbol of perfect balance with the feminine and the masculine, and you can achieve it within yourself, that you can work with these forces at the same time the forces work at the outside world, as at the material world, uh, but you can withdraw within yourself to feel, to, to uh, manipulate these forces, to become the Baphomet, to become, become the perfect balance between the feminine and the masculine. And this is, of course, very important. It is to have perfect 
balance between logic thinking and your intuitive feeling because sometimes you can't solve things with your mind sometimes you need to use your gut feeling and feel your way through the harsh ordeal on your uh, transform evolution path with an esoteric method and sometimes it is good to withdraw just to meditate and to uh, just observe what has happened within yourself and then you should shut down your brain and go back to the womb now Noah's Ark of course and uh, we have Noah uh, riding in the storm for 40 days and 40 nights and this is about the Hebrew letter Mem and Mem's number is 40 therefore 40 days and 40 nights and Noah tried to ride through the storm with the boat and he is the boatman he is the old boatman and I think they have changed this around. I think what they are talking about really is the event of the Atlantis when Noah arrives. I think the timeline in the Old Testament shouldn't be taken too strictly. And I will go, I will talk about it later on. Remember that time is an illusion. What they are talking about is event that will recur, will come back at us over and over again. It's like a loop an archetype that plays out so the date is not that important it is important for us because we think it's interesting and that's good nothing wrong with it but if you are stuck with it with it now once again with your logic brain thinking that you need to understand exactly when it happened you will miss the point feel <laughs> but right. when the water storm it is because we have gone, gone so far away from the mother's womb and we have plus plus fire technology force masculine 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 building up until a collapse will happen and when this co collapse towards the womb happen the water starts to shake the water starts to storm it is about science technology memory uh, force and language so when we have gone so far away from the womb from the feminine and the collapse starts just start and remember the collapse goes very fast it's not like slowly go back to the womb it's like boom it just go straight back to the womb and when the pull happens the water shakes and the boatman knows this and he tries to save everything from the previous matrix over to the next in order for humanity not to have to start all over again to take over memory language nations to the other matrix the shift the wall over to the next matrix to have it intact to have the knowledge of the previous matrix is very important if you don't want to end up as prey to a certain group of people who will try to overbridge this wall, this matrix with technology. And I call that archetype the tower builders. And they will always control you if the boatman fails. So you have more than one boatman. For example, we have the story of Gilgamesh and Gilgamesh was a boatman. In the 12 tablets we have, and we have the, the, the story intact now, we can read a couple of things about Gilgamesh that is very, very important to understand. Gilgamesh have seen everything, he have experienced all. Anu granted him the totality of knowledge of all, all wisdom. 
he had experienced it all. He was very powerful, all-knowing person or half-god, more god than human. And Gilgamesh was a later boatman than Noah. He saw the secrets, discovered the hidden. He brought, brought information of all time before the flood. And this is within the Gilgamesh mythology. I take that again because that's very important. He saw the secrets, discovered the hidden. He brought information of all time before the flood. He went on a journey and he met Noah, the old boatman. In the story of Gilgamesh, he meets Noah. And Noah is the old boatman. A failed boatman, but still alive. Now you can understand that in different ways. Maybe he met Noah, not as a living person with a body, because this is about necromancy. This is about speaking with the dead, because the previous matrix is the dead. The perfect form of necromancy is to be able to distract or to take out information from the old matrix into the known, into this matrix, to be a boatman, to be able to travel between matrix realms. Because time is an illusion. It exists here where we are now. They are dead but dreaming. So when the boatman fails, the consequences is harsh. Especially if you have an esoteric elite who try to do the same as the boatman, but with technology. And that is the uh, tower. They do it with technology instead of uh, esoteric uh, knowledge. Now Noah failed and he crash landed, meaning that our memory of the past was wiped out. We don't know who we are. We don't know our past. Our language was shattered and we started to devolve because the civilization was collapsing. At the same time, humanity devolved. And that's a bad state to be in when you see the ruins of the great old cities, then you devolve at the same time. For the esoteric elite to build a tower, they could have the memory intact of the previous matrix because they overbridged it with technology, through technology. Now, who will rule who? It's a very easy and a, an obvious answer to the question. I don't have, have to answer that question because we all know who will come on top of things here. And of course, that's the purpose. And of course, that's no, no one knew it, but he failed. He wasn't stupid. And he had Aelo on board with the spark because Aelo, Lucifer Prometheus knew that humanity would end up as slaves under this esoteric elite, under Enlil and all that ilk. And maybe forever, or for a very, very long time, if it hadn't given us the fire from the gods, stole the fire from the gods to give to us the spark, buried deep within our uh, body matrix as a program to ignite when we need it the most in order for us not to be slaves forever. So we have mem, memory, and it's language. And you can see mem means water. Noah traveled through mem to save memory, to save, uh, uh, to save what's left of the old matrix over to the new one. Because he knew what, what was at stake here. Prometheus knew what was at stake. 
Ale knew what was at stake. Everybody knew what was going on. The words a, a man speak are deep waters, a flowing stream, a fountain of wisdom. Right? So language is much more than just a spoken language. The, we, we can... We cannot express express things with a, a limited language. Language is force, it is science. And what we choose for language cre uh, will have an impact on our race, how we think, how we act, how we do, what we do. So you have a new beginning when we arrive at the new matrix and we have memory loss and if I ask you what happened between 10,000 BC and 5,000 BC, nothing. It's a black void of nothingness. We can find some stones, we can find some ruins, but it doesn't say anything because if we agree that the Atlantic period is real, then where is the civilization? Where is the technology? What happened? Nothing. It's wiped. A complete memory loss of nothingness. And this is the, a new beginning. The walls of sin. The walls of sin are located in the dreamlands between the sphere of dreaming and waking. The walls of sin exist beyond time and space. Time and space is an illusion. Time doesn't exist. The previous matrix is here with us, us now. We can access it, but if we don't have any memory of it, we can't access it. Because what you can't imagine, you can't, you can't do anything about it. If the memory is not there, you are lost. Then we have the sunken city of Relye. And you can call it the great old ones cities deep underneath in deep waters dead but dreaming lost civilizations collapsed atlantis and other civilization who have gone under under the previous matrix memory wipes but they are there and we can access it if we understand that that's the case. The first thing is to understand that that's, they are there and that is memory. And we start to understand this. We couldn't talk like this for 100 years ago. No, <laughs> people <laughs> thought that would be even more nuts than people think I am now. It's like no one would even listen. But now, because of the scientific language, now we have language, language to express things like this, like the Matrix. And of course, it's uh, thanks for the, the movie have done a lot of great here, because it has become an enrichment of our language, what we can express and talk about. Now we can understand what I'm talking about. This is a Maya illusion Matrix. When the shattering happened, and I don't know if the shattering was um, uh, between the matrix 10,000 BC, but I think, now I speculate, but I think the fairy, the, the gnomes and, and the all these fairy uh, creatures was shattered, their form was shattered and they become orbs when the matrix went over to this one or if it was even later on because it seems to be 
uh, more boatman moments, but it seems to be one big boatman moment every like 12,000 year ordeal here. It's speculation. But you can also say that you have a boatman moment when your body breaks down and your soul leaves. That's also a boatman moment. You don't remember the previous life. But that's a personal boatman moment. Now I'm talking about a collective boatman moment. And what I mean by that is the a huge upheaval and a huge sudden change in our, uh, how we, uh, who we are and our surroundings how we think uh, about ourselves and our surrounding. It's like a huge apocalyptic shift. And I think maybe the fairy became orbs and was shattered. The form was shattered. And maybe the gods couldn't take physical form after the shattering as well. It seems to be, they seem to be able to take form until 2000 BC, kind of a thing. But I won't say that that's, I, I can't say that I know that because there are many, many explanations that can be made about what's going on when they mean the gods walked among us. And then we have the story of Odin in Asa belief, Asa true. And he also, Asa Toth is a, or Asa Tahuti is a very close, uh, close to Odin and what he stands for. And I would say that Odin was an esoteric master and not a god. He was a practitioner and he went through the uh, evolution with esoteric method and he became Odin. When we put these words together, the meaning of Asa Toth is the source of wisdom. And Odin is the source of wisdom. Wisdom is pure insanity, resulting in absolute freedom, laughter, energy, courage, and the ability to look behind the veil of illusion that covers the true reality. Right? So he's kind of a boatman. He symbolizes the overcoming of illusion known as the cosmic yoke. Madness in the center of the universe is the emblem of irrational ecstasy and absolute freedom. Because you have to be mad uh, to understand. And you have to be viewed as such from the mainstream man who are sane and very in intellectual. But that's... <laughs> Your intellect will not take you that yeah. far, I'm sorry to say. Oh, well. <laughs> Control madness is a good thing. <laughs> Divine madness of Plato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will take you there. The well was guarded by Mimir, a shadowy being who became all-knowing by drinking the magical waters. Odin asked for a drink and Mimir replied that Odin must sacrifice an eye for a drink. Odin gogged out his own eye, dropped it into the well and was allowed to drink from the waters of cosmic knowledge. And then... You have Samal, the blind god, and Samal is accused of being the demiurge himself, one of three in the, the uh, Christian Gnostic lore, the Nag Hammadiya. Well, it's a misunderstanding, I have to say. Uh, the blind god is not a negative thing, and Samal is also the poison of, of a god. When you drink Samal's cup, you distort the, the reality and you see through the illusion that is reality. You see through Maya and you see the true world as it is. In the blind God, you have to go within. You can't look without. Then you will never get what we are talking about here. You have to go to the darkness, to the womb, 
you have to go back. You have, you have to be blind to the lies and the programming of you. And you have to open up your inner eyes in the darkness. You need to be the hermit with the lamp guiding you. But you are the one who have to put the other leg in front of the other. You have to do the journey through the dark. Feel it, be it, and embrace it. And all the darkness will be yours, transformed. So part three, dead but dreaming. <clears throat> it's time to end the night. So in the Bible, they're talking about the firmament and uh, the moon is a very important thing. Of course, the moon creates ebb and flow. It is the feminine. It is the womb. It is the unconscious. It is underwater. You have to go down underwater uh, into the unconscious, into the dark. In the first chapter of Genesis, Moses wrote, and God said, let there be rakia, that is, <clears throat> an expense, which in certain texts, the scriptures is transla translated as firmament, in the midst of the water, and let it divide the waters from the water. What does it mean? This uh, illusion of ours, the Maya, is made up of, you can call it different water tanks, but the reality is, is always around us. It, time, time and space is an illusion, so you can go from one water tank to another, from one water to another water, or from one matrix over to the next matrix. You can do it with esoteric method, you can take uh, information from previous matrix, from dead old matrix. And you can awaken the great old ones and uh, get to know them and distract uh, and enhance your memory and vision and understanding of that previous epoch of humanity. They are dead, but they are dreaming, meaning that in dreams you will have an easier access to them, but you can also uh, use a method to enhance the transmission between you and the great old ones. And you can visit this old matrix with method. You can travel there uh, in, with, uh, uh, when you dream and so on, dream magic and, and visit old uh, civilizations. And this is a deeper kind of a slumber we are in, really. If we could understand this uh, from a very early age, we would take it for granted if, if we were taught this. But as I said, there is a very deliberate uh, uh, fooling us very deliberately to deny access to this. And what you are not. Uh, aware of if what you don't mem me have in your memory and in your head you cannot do anything about it evolution the scientific evolution is of course that 10,000 BC we lived in caves and we were very primitive and there was nothing interesting at all there it was very dry boring and we were stupid as shit <laughs> and of course <laughs> You could drag women by their hair, at least. <laughs> at least that's a cartoon say. <laughs> there were a lot of sex, at least, but that, that's yeah, nothing it. else to do. Yeah, <laughs> no streaming or anything, video games. Yeah. <laughs> this is, of course, a way to program us not to search for the truth. If you understand the truth and that you can take it all back, you will become all powerful, all knowing as a boatman. Therefore, you can become a boatman yourself to travel through 
matrix, different matrix, and enter different water tanks or water matrix, because it is water within water. It is memory within memory. It is illusions and illusions, but time doesn't exist. This reality is all around us. All previous matrix is all around us and can be accessed. And this is really the art of necromancy, <clears throat> to speak to the dead, because the previous matrix are dead, but dreaming. You can access them, because time is an illusion. And necromancy is, of course, about a lot of things. You can speak to the dead relatives and so on. But according to me, the most profound form of necromancy is to go into the old matrix, the great old one, to pierce the veils between this matrix, to become a boatman through method. To be able to travel through, to be able to travel through water, through mem. <clears throat> when Lilith unites with Lucifer, the eye of Lucifer opens and illusions of the world are shattered. This is what the serpent promised in the Garden of Eden to shatter illusions and this is you do it through, through method or you do it through technology i don't recommend technology of course as you know <laughs> but if you ain't have a soul now they have a soul but the soul is so dormant that they can't find it they can't ignite, they can't feel it, then that becomes their reality. And they start to tinker, they, try, they start to do it with technology instead. But you should do it through spirit. You should do it through method. Your body is your temple. The tower is not your temple. The boatman is your archetype. But you should should not fail, of course. <laughs> so the great old ones is, of course, the call of Cthulhu and the Cthulhu mythology. And we all know about this mythology, about Hopi Lovecraft. And Hopi Lovecraft, I think, <clears throat> had lucid dreaming and he could travel there. And I think he was frightened by it. Because really, according to according to history, he was a materialist and an atheist. Right. I don't know about that. But you can always explain away loose dreaming and dreams as a natural phenomena. And I think maybe he viewed it as a natural phenomena to have dreams about this dark old ones, these great old ones. And he wrote a lot of books about it and some movies have come about as well. I'm waiting for a very good movie about this. I don't know. I haven't seen one. They are yet. making uh, The Call of Cthulhu. They are making it. Okay. So, so let's see how it is. Yeah. I thought it would come sooner or later <laughs> very interesting yeah so one of these great old ones is dagon and dagon is quite known these days because days because of the cult of dagon in uh, africa close to egypt they worship dagon dagon and cthulhu represent the death of the unconscious out of which the primal forgotten instincts sometimes emerge to the light of consciousness. He is a sender of dreams and visions as nightmares, and his number is 777. 
that is Dagon. And Dagon, as I said, is worshipped by an African tribe. And I remember it was a quite a big thing before. Now it's more silent about that, but they are very interesting people. And there are a lot of connections between Dagon and Enki, as you can understand. Dagon is like a fish god uh, residing in water. And you have Enki, and Enki is, of course, one. Uh, oh, Enki and Enlil is the son of Anu, and Anu is the main god in Anunnaki pantheon. And you have Enlil, and Enlil is Jova. Enki is the dark one, like the devil. But Enki have more names. In Egypt, he was called Pata, and in Greek mythology, he was Poseidon. So now we have Poseidon, water, uh, memory, uh, old god, old Anunnaki god, and is very close to Dagon. And they have the same star. And their star is the is Sirius, and Sirius is a fixed star, and the number of Sirius is thirty-three. As in Freemasonry, the thirty-three degree in Scottish Rite Freemasonry is the highest degree, and in you know, a lot of Freemason lodges, you have have Sirius or had Sirius as their main. A symbol and the right sun worship in Egypt now in a lot of uh, different periods in Egypt but in some epochs there were the sun behind the sun was serious it was the right sun worship it was not our sun but the sun behind the sun and that is serious and it is Enki's star and Dagon star and both of them have a water aspect to them now you may recall also that Jesus was crucified at an age of 33 and that they found Jesus with through the Bethlehem star and Bethlehem star is probably Sirius therefore you have a connection with Jesus and Sirius as well and uh, to say that the character Jesus was an Enlil worshipper or that is his father Jehovah is a, is a very <laughs> wrong. Yeah. Sorry to say. They turned it around. But more attribute to Dagon or the hermit in the tarot deck. And the hermit, I talked about him before, it's the the esoteric practitioner withdraw within himself into the darkness and he has to hold the lamp and light up the darkness within to understand it and to find his way and he is the one who has to put the other leg in front of the other and do this journey you cannot be told this journey you have to do the journey you have to walk the walk and that's very hard and very harsh. And one more time, I think the real Jesus, I think, is Ben Stada. He was one who wanted to explore the darkness and transform it and show you a way how to do it. But he cannot walk the walk for you, but he can pass on the lamp to you to do the same. You can do the same as I do and even better. But humanity doesn't want to know that because it implies that they can't watch TV anymore and they have to do some <laughs> serious work and that's shit. They rather yeah. sit and wait for a flip-flop Jesus to save them, but it will never happen, ever. Because that's just contraproductive according to nature. You have to learn and you have to transform, feel your way through and be engaged. When Shakti unites with Shiva in sexual act, Shiva's eyes opens and pierce the veil of illusion, Maya. 
This is what the serpent promised in the Garden of Eden. And of course, if you have an elite using technology, you should uh, <laughs> know that the towers is rising up right on in, in this moment because we are in the end times and the new matrix start to rise around rise around us so you will see a shiva statue uh, outside sar of course and i would say that sar is the heart of the machine the heart of the tower uh, and you will see it rise it is not the first tower I will talk about the first tower later on in this presentation, but it is a very in your face tower, according to me. For those with eyes to see, they will see it. And you have the Shiva's eye on the card, the tower in tarot, uh, at least in Alistair Crowley's deck, you have the eye of Shiva uh, over the tower, the card tower. Part four, to see new life. What happened when the matrix shift? What happened when we have to start all over again? Well, we will have to see new life or start all over again. <clears throat> and Saturn is the beginning and the end, the alpha and the omega. And in the North Pole of Saturn, you have the, this hexagon. And a hexagon is, of course, six-sided. And a very important symbol for the elite. Saturn is a very important symbol for the elite. And, of course, you have the beehive. And the beehive is one of Illuminati's main symbols. And the owl. And the beehive is made up of hexagons. And they are building these honeycombs combs, and spreading life. They are the one who spreads pollen. They are the one who spreads nature. They are the ones who seed life. They are the one who makes flower bloom, trees grow, and so on. Now, the B is a very common symbol. You can, when you start to see it, you will see it. Napoleon had bees in his uh, clothing. Uh, and as I said, Illuminati used bees. It was very uh, important in uh, Egypt. The honey was very important uh, for many reasons, of course. The B is a very important symbol. One very interesting thing is, of course, Yggdrasil. In, in, uh, in this uh, framework, you see the tree have huge roots going deep down into earth and pumping up water from the old matrix, old words. The root goes down deep, sucking up memory stored in the tree. And Yggdrasil is, of course, the famous uh, Asa belief, Asa true tree. And uh, on the tree, you will find different words, uh, metaphysical words, and you can, you can travel to them. These words exist. They exist in the metaphysical, and through the runes and method, you can visit them. Uh, this is not like fantasy. Uh, there are methods how to do, go there. In the same way, you can go back to Relie, the old cities who are sunken. Uh, you can visit a uh, lot of metaphysical realms. And they all exist. And you can access them. And of course, this is something... Uh, the they don't want you to know that you have that power. 
And of course, when you do, you can distract information, knowledge. You can get new spiritual guides, gods that helps you on the journey, helps you in information, unlocks deep memories forgotten by humankind and so on. They can empower you. They can show you reality. So one thing you should ask yourself about the Yggdrasil, have this world existed in previous matrix among us, like in matter, but they have gone over to a metaphysical state because of the shift in the matrix, because of the shift in the water tanks, because they are all exist here, we can access them, but they are not in matter anymore. They have gone over. And Yggdrasil nourished them through pumping up water with its roots. And the roots go deep down into earth, deep down in unconscious, deep down in the underworld. Pumping up memory to sustain these words of Yggdrasil in memory, in human memory. So you can access them still. And there are nine words on Yggdrasil. And they are Asgard. Now I tell you the Swedish name of them. <laughs> but Asgard, Midgård, Jotunheim, Alfheim, Nidaveller, Nidaveller, Niffelheim, Muspelheim, and Helheim. And maybe these words have been much more physical in your face realities. I don't know. But either way, they've gone over to an old matrix and ain't here with us anymore. But you can access them. And Yggdrasil nourished them with spiritual water, with mem, with memory in order for them not to be forgotten by men. And you can access these words through runes, through method. And uh, they are far removed from us, but still they exist. So let's go over to part five and to Eridu and Enki. Now the old matrix is gone. We have started to spread life through the bee. Nature is flourish flourishing and the vegetation comes back. Now it's time to seed civilizations and start build the infrastructure place again. Not for the first time, not as the scientist lies about. The civilization didn't start 5000 BC. Civilization restarted 5000 BC. But what happened before 5000 BC and 10,000 BC, we don't know. We don't have any memory of it. And of course, you might say we don't have any memory of 3000 BC either. But yeah. what I'm talking about is, of course, the fact that if we esoteric people agree that this Atlantis, exist, Atlantis existed and that it was a high technology culture, then we have to ask ourselves what happened when it collapsed? And why did, did it just disappear? There is a huge blank between 10,000 BC and 5,000 BC. We doesn't find anything there. And it should. We should, of course. At least found more profound ruins and so on. Now you can claim that it is buried in deep layers of mud and so on. But today we have technology and we can find the pyramids. And if you believe Graham Hancock and people like that, they claim it is 12,000 BC. Therefore, at least we know there were huge building infrastructure technology back then. So what happened between 10,000 BC and 5,000 BC? Nothing. 
And you can argue that the pyramids are even older. Now, if you are into the alien paradigm, you see aliens everywhere. <laughs> Everything is aliens when it's more pro it is profound esoteric symbology mm -hmm. going on here, of course. And um, we see this bird uh, with a bucket of water, and we have established why water is very important. He is spreading knowledge, science, language, nations, and he starts to seed the new life you start to see the pine cone and it's also a symbol for man to awaken man with the third eye to uh, evolve humanity again not for the first time it's just a lie again therefore he has wings he fly and spread life he is a kind of a bee but also a god related to Enki and Enlil and so on. Now, Enlil wanted to drown humanity in the story, but you shouldn't take it uh, as, uh, as that. It's more profound than that. He wanted to drown humanity's memory to wipe clean the memory in order for humanity to go back to a primitive state, easy to control. So it's a struggle between four, two forces here. Enlil, who want to have a, a like an android human race, easy to control. In the mythology in Sumer, it states that Enlil was pissed off because of the noise humanity made. Now, what kind of a noise? It can be many different noises, noises through, tech, through technology. And this noise spread over the, uh, our uh, solar system. So it went off our planet. So it could be technology that could take us to different planets. But it could also be uh, esoteric knowledge, how to separate your uh, light source soul from the body and soul travel. And they, it disturbed them a little. Now we want humanity to be drowned in memory, to be drowned into a primitive state. Therefore, no noise. Now Enki had a different idea. He wanted to evolve humanity again for a reason. And that means new language, new memory, and the start of civilization again. Now he has to, to teach humanity the art of creating civilizations all over again. And of course, these bird-like creatures, gods, uh, angels, uh, use the tree of life, Syrian tree of life, to put these pine cones up. And, uh, and in, in some uh, pictures, they take it down also and, and go away. So it's a, a harvesting and spreading of life, including humanity, or with humanity in mind. Because you, have to, you need the art of agriculture before the art of civilization an infrastructure so you have to start with Enlil and the farming and Ninurta and Saturn schedule time rules regulations and when you have food supply you can start to build uh, big cities or city states and this is the art of civilization or art of creating huge civilization but in Sumer, it was different city-states raging war against each other. So it was you know, a state of war all the time. And different city-states worship different Anunnaki gods. Because they have different ideas what they want to do with humanity. How to control humanity. 
at the same time let them create the infrastructure or build the infrastructure they need. And from an elite perspective, if you have technology and you have memory intact from the previous matrix, then the goal is to recreate the infrastructure they had in the previous matrix, but they need workers to do their bidding for them. In other, in other words, they had the blueprint because they have the memory intact from the previous matrix. And now it was a matter of restart and take it back through us or with us as their workers. We are the ones spread life, spread civilization. We are the pine cone. We are part of the seeding of life. And the first city was Eridu. And Eridu was Enki's town, of course. Because it is Enki line who are most, uh, who want this civilization building the most, not Enlil. Remember, Enlil want us as an android species, easy to control. Because what Enki is doing now is a little bit dangerous, isn't it? When they start to build the civilization they need to educate us they need to give us a new language they need to uh, transform us now we start to grow you can't have bumbling idiots creating advanced buildings it, do it doesn't work <laughs> you can't have primitive workers building cigarettes yeah the scientists believe the slave throw up some rock and conjure up the pyramids but they themselves are complete morals of course it's of course. not true and it's nonsense you need very advanced people to create advanced buildings it doesn't work otherwise and you have this man with the fish suit and of course it's an alien right no, it is Enki, of course, rising up as Poseidon to see new life, to spread the art of civilization, to start it all over again. And he has his bucket with water with him, the bucket of memory, language, science. And Enki, Poseidon and Pata is the same god. Therefore, we know that he is about science, magic, language, memory, water. To spread it all in order for them to get it all in back again. And the cuneiform became very important because, as I said, mem is about language. And language uh, is very important for what we can express and do. And you have a, today we have a very a language based on fire, force, and science. But you have a, a, a language in between. You can call them cuneiform, the hieroglyphs, the runes, and the Hebrew letters. They are a language in between form and force. So form is only symbol, symbols and is very subtle. The in between is a between the language we have now and the form language. That is very subtle. Today we have a very exact language and a very scientific language. One plus two plus three is six and you have Try to use the language not to misunderstand nothing, but in order to do so, so misunderstand everything. And you can use the language to manipulate, lie, and do whatever. And they do it in full front today. It's all about lie, deceit, play around with language, fool you into believing stupidity and nonsense. <laughs> But this language in between, the hieroglyph, was a symbology, and you can understand it in 
a lot of different ways. Therefore, you have to combine the hieroglyphs, the different hieroglyphs. Uh, a, then you have a, a bigger picture of what's, what's going on there. And you have to use your brain. And that's not good today. <laughs> so apparently not. But it is a, a language of, of symbols. And the Hebrew language is also a, a language of symbols because each Hebrew letter means something. Like, for example, example Mem, the number is 40, the meaning is water. And the watchers have said that the Hebrew language is very important and very powerful if you want to ignite your 22 strands of dormant DNA. It's much more than a language. It's, it's a huge thing. But in the previous matrix, you had a, probably uh, for a period of time, a form language. And form can be a vibration that you sound, you make a sound when you, you pronounce the words in a way that you can't misunderstand it. It can be uh, vibration, energy, and color. That language is very hard to, to manipulate people with. It's a more direct language. And if you, as you remember, when the Tower of Babylon fell apart, uh, God confused the language. He confused mm -hmm. Mem. He destroyed and shattered the unity in language because language is very important who we are what we can do what we will become how will we start to use language against each other it says something about the human race observe observe what's happening today how they <laughs> use language for nonsense games and don't go into it because it's just rubbish of course they are not use language to be clear and try to communicate with each other. They are trying to use language to manipulate, lie and deceit each other. And that's where we are today. Very true. So this cuneiform, I, I, according to me, you will end up in between of this language, this form and force language. It is in between the cuneiform Hebrew, the runes, the hieroglyphs. But what can you do with the powerful language all about force, science and, and masculine uh, fire? You can do a lot with that language as well. The cuneiform is there for a reason. Why did the Anunnaki gave, give us the cuneiform? According to Sumerian mythology, it was Nabu who gave us this language. And Nabu is the same as Hermes, uh, for example, and as Horus in Egypt. But you need a very exact language sometimes when you're going to build technology and infrastructure. And Enki, another name for Enki, as I said before, is Pata, Poseidon. What is a pyramid? Because I think you, you might be confused. <laughs> what is the connection with, between Pata, Poseidon, and Enki? I mean, water, God in Greek mythology, Pata in Egypt, and Enki in Sumeria. What is the connection here? And I will make it very clear for you here. When the water storms, reality trembles, and the pyramid pumps up water. The pyramid is based on water. And the pyramid is technology. And some people argue that it is a nuclear plant. And I agree, <clears throat> it is a kind of a nuclear plant. Uh, and it pumps up water. Underneath the pyramid it is water aqueducts pumping it up. And water, you can charge water with le electricity. And you can have a huge effect. And let's say you mix the water with like mercury and other chemicals. 
what can be achieved, I don't know. I am not an, into nature science, but I just throw it out there. Certainly, the Nazis used mercury in, in their, the Bell project. Mm -hmm. And they were very interested in nuclear weapons and so on. The art of water is vast and it's a huge, huge thing. And you have to start to think about it and see it in front of you in order for you to get it. But water is the most powerful element, not fire, not earth, not air, but water. And you have these boats. The pharaoh was buried with these boats. And the, science, and the scientist was, of course, like, look, they were stupid. They couldn't <laughs> travel with this boat so far. They couldn't travel to America. <laughs> well, this is a, a symboli symbology for, the, for a boatman, for a necromancer who can travel uh, between words and, and illusions and also travel the underworld and travel to the afterlife and so on. And it is as simple as, as simple as that. But of course, if you only view everything <laughs> in material, with material eyes, you, you will be blind. You will be the blind, not the blind Samal, but the blind fool, <laughs> the real blind fool, like the blind fool who doesn't understand that he is a fool. But that's what it is. Because Egypt was all about uh, esoteric metaphysical understanding. And as I talked about before, Dagon and Enki is very close similarity between them. Both, both are associated with water. Enki is also Poseidon and Dagon is also about water, right? And both of them have Sirius as the fixed star. And now we come to the Black Sun, of course, because the Black Sun is Sirius. In astro astrology, in astrolo astrology terms, it is the Black Sun or the Sun behind the Sun. And one shaft of the pyramid points to Sirius and you can debate it because the star is moving and so on. When did they build it? How can they track it? And so on and so on. Sure. But I know that they worshipped Sirius as the real sun in periods of time. And I know that the Freemason have Sirius in very hard esteem. They have it in their lodges. USA have it in their flag. And it is uh, one of the fixed, 15 fixed stars that is very important. Pointing out of this matrix. Point, it's a pointer to something that exists Beyond, beyond the matrix, <clears throat> beyond the zodiac, that is the limit of this matrix reality. Now, there, are, there is much more to it than that, because this realm is like realms within realms, water tanks within water tanks, water within water. So if you explore this matrix, you can go to many places underneath us, under Earth, like Ementid. You can go into mythology, mythology uh, uh, cities in the Hindu and the uh, Buddhist traditions. They all exist. You can go to Yggdrasil and the worlds in Yggdrasil. All this exists. So this matrix is huge and it is waters within waters, realms within realms. So you don't have to leave in a hurry because you have a lot to discover here. And you ain't a prison here if you can travel freely. A prison is one who are prisoned within his own body. 
then this material realm become a prison, but only because you have allowed them to create the prison for you. Now it takes some effort. That is true. And as I said, our soul is like, it's far gone, but it's still there. And you still have the spark, the gift from Prometheus. And Aelo gave it to you. <clears throat> they cannot hold you prison here. And this is first and foremost a prison for your mind. If they manage to convince you that this is nonsense, then it is what it is. And for the most people, it is. And you can wait for Jesus, and you can wait to die, and you can convince yourself that you will come to heaven, hell, or that nothing remains when you die. But it will not take you anywhere. Not until you allow this to be a possibility, you start to search for the truth. And this is a method. It is not a dream. It is not a it is kind of a dream, right? But it is not a pipe. It is right. a method. Therefore, you can take it back. You can ignite and you can do the journey and feel it for yourself. Then you don't have to listen to a crazy Swede telling you this. <laughs> you can explore and feel it through, through yourself. So now we come to more modern times. What is a nuclear plant? Well, I was born and raised close to a new nuclear plant. We could see it from my little town of, mm. of 1,750 people. And we could see it all because it was in a bay. Uh, and the, the nuclear plant's name was Forsmark. And uh, I get a job to do a documentary in Forsmark to document the last turbine chain. They changed the heart of the machine. Uh, it was a huge thing. And they thought it would be the last one. So they wanted to document it. And I said, yes, I can take that job. And during this time, this was like 20 years ago, it was not that. The security was there, but it was very relaxed time in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could walk around there and film and do stuff. So I, and my father worked there as the econo head of the economic department. Yeah. Uh, so I was raised there. I I uh, knew the place and what a nuclear plant is is really a steam engine based on water. Uh -huh. Now, when I stared down into the tank in the nuclear plant, when I did the filming, I didn't understand that I was staring down into Enki's machine, water technology, magic force, uh, science, and all of that combined into one machine. And a nuclear plant is not that far away from a pyramid at all. It's just a modern form. And people doesn't understand that it is based on water. And the wa when the water is used, they pump it out, pump the water out in the ocean. And uh, we w we traveled on that water and catch fishes because they liked it there because it, the water was clean and warm, and nothing dangerous about it, right? But people <laughs> think about Hulk and shit like that. But it's uh. It's a very profound machine. Yeah, it's like the Simpsons when you see the three three eyed <laughs> fish. That's what we've learned. Yeah. yeah. You should have some security in place and you can argue right. that there are some things <laughs> that ain't that good. But the technology is very powerful, of course. This is the Enki machine in modern form. But the Enki machine, the nuclear plant based on water, is not the is is the start of 
some more profound technology. And of course, we end up in the Second World War and the Nazis, because now the race become about heavy water. Because heavy water is a base ingredient in nuclear weapon, atomic weapon, and big weapon that can destroy worlds and uh, uh, tear cities apart. And this technology is based on heavy water, of course. Now the Nazis, they didn't want to destroy the world. Uh, they had the idea of recreating the Atlantic period. And for them, it was a, a very romantic, beautiful uh, moment in time where Roman buildings with huge columns and huge buildings rising up again. They didn't want to destroy it. But of course, this was a race of time. Who will win? And the bigger the, we the weapon, the, the bigger the loss, of course. But I still believe that the Nazis have another thing in mind when they wanted to create the nuclear, the, the atomic bomb and so on. I don't think they had in mind to drop it off. I think they could win the race if they wanted destruction and wanted to win to any cost, they will, would be the first one who would drop the bomb on the Allies. But they had a different mind. They, had, they didn't want to use the weapon for war purpose. Therefore, they waited. They knew something else. They knew that the atomic bomb could do some esoteric magic for them. And heavy water was the main, it was a very important ingredient in this weapon. And now we come back to Enki again, of course, heavy waters, technology, force, fire. And in the next part, uh, I will talk about the tower but I will start to talk about it a little bit here because I want to tie this all, wrap this up. Uh, and Kadingir Raki was the Tower of Babylon, destroyed by Ninurta, and Ninurta is the son of Enlil, because what they wanted to do was to open up the matrix and take out some information, knowledge to connect is a form of necromancy, really. But also when you do the necromancy and you try to, to connect to older matrix form, you also aim at the stars. It's uh, like Sirius is Enki Dagon star. Therefore, you should connect to Sirius and open up information and by doing so open up information from previous matrix the dead but dreaming therefore you have two forces two archetypes working against each other but they have the same goal you have the boatman and you have the tower and Either you are the boatman or you are the tower. And then you have all the humanity in between these archetypes. And now we are racing up against a new matrix. The age of Aquarius is a water age. And we will see a huge shift very soon in humanity. Either we try to go through this matrix to the next with our memory intact with science with language or we have to start all over again now i'm not saying that science is bad it depends on how we're doing it i'm not saying that the masculine is bad i think when we build up 
science, uh, civilization, technology going further and further away from the womb, we start also to understand what the womb is because we can see very clearly that it is two polar opposites. And we start to understand the forces and the mechanism, mechanism that uh, going on. When we implode, you have to catch all that knowledge in a millisecond of time, become the boatman and travel through before it collapses. Otherwise, you have to start all over again. And if the tower is built and the esoteric elite succeed and we don't succeed, they will control us in the next matrix, matrix as well. Because we will not have any power, we will not have any memory, we will not have any technology, we will have nothing. And if they get their way this time around, they will do exactly what Enlil wanted to do, but with technology. They want to connect you to a high mind tower and you become an android connected to the tower. And that is the end of the human. We know it in this matrix and over to the next one. And that's the reason why they want to do it. They don't want you to become a boatman. They don't want you to wake up. They don't want you to take back the power. They don't want you to become a boatman or be on board on a boat. I want you to be on board. And I want us, I don't want any lifeboats for the elite. They are all sold. Because in the next matrix, we should take back everything they have taken from us. And that matrix will not be a prison. Because a prison is only a prison if you can't soul travel, if you don't have any power. If you can leave whenever you want, this ain't a prison. And some believe that the next matrix will be the last one. And if I am correct that every matrix uh, is like 12,000 years, then I think we should take it back and we can explore it fully together at last as a family. So when the boatman comes, the tower follows or when the tower comes, the boatman follows. And you see the Noah's flood in the Old Testament is right before the tower moment. But the Old Testament is not about time, but it is about archetypes and forces playing out against each other. What they try to tell you in the Old Testament is that when the boatman comes, the echo of that echoes out in time and space, and sooner or later the tower will rise again. But it can be the opposite. When the tower is rising, it echoes out, and sooner or later a boatman will arrive. How close is it in time? For the most part, very close. Because it is, as I said, it's building, 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 and then it collapses. Therefore, the incidents are, for the most time, when we come to a collective uh, experience, very close to each other. But we have like small boatman moments for example, when your body breaks down, that's a small individual boatman moment. And I think that the Tower of Babylon moment uh, can be uh, an effect from the big Tower moment 
that was Atlantis and that Noah was the boatman of the Atlantis and that Gilgamesh was, was the boatman, boatman just before the Tower of uh, Babylon. Now the first tower, when did it appear this time around in recent time? The first tower was a bomb, an atomic bomb, and it was Oppenheimer who created the first tower. And a very famous quote from Oppenheimer is, now I become death, the destroyer of worlds. Now he should have said, now I have become the necromancer, the key of time and space. Because when one of these bombs go off, it ripples hole in the fabric of this matrix and let loose uh, spirits and some believe UFOs. Overbridging the matrix, this matrix with old matrix. And I think that is the main reason why the Nazis wanted this technology and they have it, had it in mind and therefore they didn't use it as a weapon against the allies or they waited too long because they didn't want to bomb Earth into oblivion. Their idea was to create a beautiful future, a new Atlantic period but they needed to contact the great old ones or the old matrix to distract information to awaken the great old ones or the memory of them. Esoteric knowledge was the lore, was the coin and the one uh, who was most into it was Heinrich Himmler and he was very interested in runes and stuff like that. And SS was not only the name of the stormtroopers, but also the, swat, the, the Black Sun. Right. And there you have it. The Black Sun, 666, Sirius, Enki, Dagon, the Great Old Ones, the Great Deep, the Moon, the Black, the Swastika. And then Jack Parsons uh, made an esoteric ritual called Babylon Working, where he used technology to achieve some results. And uh, Jack Parsons was, of course, the rocket scientist, and he was a disciple of uh, Alistair Crowley. But I think he took a step uh, away from Crowley when he started to use technology in this way. But what he's talking about is uh, Enki, the scientist, the magic, the fire, the force. And he's called it Babylon working. Now, Babylon is not necessarily a reference to Babylon in and of itself. It is a bigger... Uh, bigger word here it, it, it refers to a bigger uh, word a bigger phenomena but Babylon is also 77 the number is 77 and as I said Dagon is 777 so it's a very <laughs> close <laughs> connection there and uh, I decoded the Wizard of Oz and I said uh, the Oz is 77. And you have the Disney, new Disney logo with the tower and, and the star. And the star is, of course, Oz and Sirius. There's a very close connect, connection there to all of this. And... Uh, Jack Parson uh, was killed. Some believe it was an accident. He was uh, 
I, I, if I remember correctly, it was burned down in his house. Some believe it was an accident. Some believe it was a, a hit job. And he worked for NASA. And that's mm -hmm. also very interesting, right? NASA is all about science, magic, force, fire, expansion. And you have this plus, 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 masculine, 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 and then implosion. Yeah. And when the bomb is building up, it is fire, fire, force, 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 but it's not what kills you, but it, it is the implosion that kills you. It is when it goes back to the womb that kills you. And it is during that moment you have to die. You have to die in order to awaken anew. So when it builds up, masculine, 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 and when it implodes, you go back to the womb. You, when this force is in perfect e equilibrium, you can understand it all. And you can pierce the veil, and you can see through the illusion, because now we can start to understand what I'm talking about. And this is because of internet, fire, force, force language, memory, technology. It's not, nothing bad. These two forces need to exist in order for you to be free, in order for you to understand what's going on. But you can work with these forces inside of yourself if you close off the outside world, go into your temple, go into your darkness, go into yourself and start to work with the feminine, the masculine. And Lucifer has stated that you need your heart and you need your brain. And if you lose either the brain or the heart, you are lost. You need both of them. And if you believe that the elite have their heart intact, then it's your <laughs> belief. I believe that they are barely humans. They have gone so far. And I could do and I could argue even that they need to do the ritual for them to be able to take physical form in matter because they are so far removed. They need their dark esoteric Saturn demiurgic practice in order for them to have a foothold in the matrix. Now, there is no reason to uh, vaccinate a lot of humans in hope for them to die if they come back. Now you have to convince them. Now when, when we have built the infrastructure, when we have done their bidding, they want to do away with us. And with the technology, they can open up the skies and they can convince us that we should leave. Otherwise, we will come back and understand that your mind is such a powerful thing. What you believe in what is what you get. If you aim for heaven, you will have heaven. You will go back, you will leave, and many people will leave. That is not a boatman moment. That is not a boatman. A boatman is over bridging this matrix to the new one for us to create the new real matrix for us. A new one where we get rid of the elite. Now it is a matter of time between the boatman and the tower archetype. And now I have the last uh, slide here. And it's just to overbridge and go towards the third part. We have a second part before that one. But I want to remind you that in the Lord of the Rings, you have this tower. And of course, Sauron is the Lord of the Rings, and the Lord of the Rings is Saturn, and Saturn is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end of every matrix. 
Zeus had to defeat Kronos to start the Olympian age. The Olympian gods took over over the ti Titans. And now the Olympian ruled. And today you will see many black cubes in cities and, and in buildings. And the black cube is of course the black cube of Saturn. It is a sign of the end times. And I think we have maybe 50 to 70 years ahead of us of struggle. And, uh, but yeah, I think it is our time. I think we will become the boatman. I think at least some people will be on board. I do think that many people will leave before they didn't want us to leave. They gave us another story and closed the skies because they need us back to build the infrastructure in place. But now we have, now they want us to leave. Now they want us gone because at the same time we are building the infrastructure. Now we are the threat to the same infrastructure we built. If chaos start to reign, if we start to awaken, we are many more than they are. And they know that it's a matter of time right now. Uh, that's the reason why they push the agenda so hard. Now in the Lord of the Ring, it is Sauron that is the tower, of course. And if you read the Lord of the Ring, the movies are great, but of course it is very limited the, in the books. You will know that Sauron had physical form during one age. And then it became the eye in the third age and the tower. Yeah, that's the presentation. <laughs> that was wonderful. Thank you, David. That would that might be my favorite one yet because it's so spanning. Maybe the, the, the sense of urgency has been raised, but also the hope. So yeah, really appreciate it for some, I don't know how my brain works, but uh I was thinking of that old 80s song by uh, Irish singer Chris de Berg, Don't Pay the Ferryman. Probably a few people know it, but I'd say, we need to pay the ferryman. Regardless <laughs> of what pe the song and Anthony Peake think, we need to pay the ferryman. So great job. Uh, so much to unpack. Uh, Matt, Vance, I'm going to throw it at you. Any questions from you, the audience? I was looking. Great conversations in the chat. Yeah. Really big. Hundreds of people were just coming up and complimenting your ideas david it was great yeah I, I i've never seen the chat so aligned with the presentation a lot of times we'll have you know speak you know people in the chat talking about the presentation but it'll be there'll be a lot of side chats but people really focused on this and it was that very uh riveting and fascinating thank uh, you yeah i thank don't know you. if you know I, I was i was right in there with them saying all sorts of things too it's very inspiring um uh, what, what the one question I remember uh, is, um, you said Noah was part of the Gilgamesh epic. Was he called Noah, or what was no. his name? Yuna uh, Piskin, if I remember correctly. Uh, okay, or something like that. Yeah, I wasn't aware of that. That was interesting. Yeah, and, he uh, has two different names. I can. Yuna uh, Piskin is one, uh, uh, and another is. Ah, I'm sorry, I don't remember it now. But he is in the Gilgamesh myth, but with another name. Interesting. And I was wondering, how would you relate the uh, one of the famous boatmen, Sharon, you know, the Greek boatman? Yeah. Uh, the, and he causes you to lose your memory when when yeah. you cross in, into the uh, in, on the river Styx. How does that relate with the other boatmen? Yeah, I feel good question, Vance, and I was going to take this up yeah i feel that sharon karen is um in the greek mythology is based on the boatman mythology but they have twisted around a little bit and now they say he's only taking souls to the realm of the dead but the original boatman idea mythology i think is a man who can travel through the matrix words to the old ones and to this one 
and to help other seekers to cross over and to uh, uh, to take out some information and knowledge and memory from the previous waters or firmaments. Yeah. So uh, Charon was kind of a, um, a failed boatman, really, <laughs> because he's yeah. erasing memories instead of carrying them forth. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I think also there is a propaganda going on where they take everything that can empower us to really beat us with it. Uh, and yeah, they distort things. But I think the original myth is the boatman myth that Sharon is, is based on. But I don't know that, but that's what I feel. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I thought it was also interesting about the uh, correlation between Atlantis and the Great Flood, you know, because Atlantis died in a Great Flood, basically, as the island sunk. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, yeah, we had so. uh, three super chats here, but no questions from the super chatters, uh, even though they had the opportunity. Chester, um, who is a very frequent contributor. Thank you, Chester. Uh, Polaris23 um, gave us his thanks and thanks. You know, you're very welcome, Polaris. Um, always good to see you in the chat. He's um, a very frequent visitor to our chats. And Francis of Sophia Klatt also uh, gave us a gen. Klatt, <laughs> Nectar. Yeah. She's going here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah thank you nectar, very right? much. Thank you very yeah, thank you very much for the support. Yeah, I think uh we probably should wrap it up. Uh we've gone a long while. I my my quick question is uh people might ask what is the method, David? Yeah. Want to get method. out. Yeah, all this information yeah. doesn't help unless we can get out the tools to get out. <laughs> <laughs> there are good methods. I use the left hand path method and they say it's dark and and it's not for all. Uh, you have to be prepared and, and to go into unconscious, to the darkness and transform it. You really need the right attitude while you're doing it. If you do it for selfish reasons, I don't think you should. <laughs> it's a good idea. Can you fail? Can you stumble and fall? Absolutely. What I can uh, tell people, start slow and don't over you, you need wisdom and you need discernment a good way to start is just to buy a tarot deck and meditate on the cars because they are very powerful and i've heard that you miguel and your wife have designed one i surely won't want one of those decks but i, I can buy one from you in august and but the tarot deck is wonderful yeah cool very cool very cool and uh, so I recommend to meditate on the tarot. For example, Dagon is attributed with the moon and the hermit. If you want to have some uh, dreams, uh, a conscious dream, meditate on the tarot card, the moon and the hermit. Then I recommend you to create your own temple. You can go into and meditate. And if you want to take one step further, you should meditate on some sigils. Uh, the sigils is attributed to different gods. Uh, Dagon has one sigil, for example. And you can try to get in contact with him through the sigil meditation. Of course, you need to put up the ritual, your temple. Uh, remember, do it very slowly and do it with wisdom and, and go about it with the, the right attitude. Otherwise, you, you will end up <laughs> hurting yourself. And I can promise you, when you really get in contact with these forces, it is like a sledgehammer. Nothing will be the same. It's like to like be knocked. When I started to get contact with Lucifer, my old self was dead and my own old reality was gone. Because then I knew these forces are real and you can communicate with them and you can have a meaningful uh, understanding, uh, knowledge with them, and a very powerful ally and Wonderful. help thank on you, your journey. You. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, we probably better wrap it up. I've got to, I know I have to run. 
I guess Vance put up a question there. Yeah, uh, Polaris gave a super chat, so I felt obligated to uh, put his last minute question in, which is commensurate with what we usually ask people at the end of the chats. Do you have classes? And if so, where can we find them? Yeah, you can go into my channel and uh, you will find information there. Um, one of my uh, clips there, I'm talking about the course. I started a uh, course. I started in January, but uh, on Sunday, I will add the last uh, students to the course. And then it, it have gone too far. Then I can't take in more people. Sunday is the last day I will consider to take in more. It's a lot of work, but uh, I'm also very... I really mean it. I know humanity. We stand in front of a matrix wall. You you can feel it. You can see it. The technology is just building up. Something big will happen. And if I can help the human race, my family, uh, I will do it. Awesome. Wonderful. We'll check it out. And again, uh, David's channel is in the show notes. But we are at the end, and David will continue the next one in April. Yeah. So uh, be patient yeah. and, uh, yeah, start waking up and doing the method, doing the work. Uh, well, Vance, thank you very much for keeping us company on this journey. Well, I had a good time. I uh, really enjoyed this one. Thank you, Vance. And thank yes, you, Miguel. Man. And thanks to the audience. Wonderful to be here as always. And this is just a treat to be in this dire age of humanity but it is a very exciting one and uh, we will win yeah we all have the power we all have the skill each one of us we all can make a difference so yeah david thank you very much and everybody have a good rest of your friday your freya day and a good weekend take care everybody good night good day good night, good night. goodbye good everything <laughs> <laughs>